All right, game three. This looks interesting. Hmm, there's a lot going on here to think about. Oh, so we got draw, slayers draw, tacticians draw, eventually plus card token from teacher will be draw, if it gets that far. Trashing is just remake or expand, plus action, port, acting troop, disciple, or teacher. Well, not teacher itself, but the plus action token. Oh, and lost arts, that's a thing. So many. Uh, plus buy, peasant, or the plus buy token. You can also gain things with falconer. Tacticians plus buy. What are we doing here? So I guess the first question is, is, is this double tactician? I think the answer is no. It could be. And the main question is what's your payload, I think, for answering that question. And if you're playing with double tack, you can't play with supplies, because tack will discard the supplies. You have to play like a stack of soldiers and expand. And that seems inferior to me, I think. So I think we're not playing with Tactician. In that case, Slay is the draw until late in the game. And I mean, you can get ports for plus action, that'll be fine. I don't know exactly how this goes. I mean, eventually Scheme, like plus card on Scheme could be nice because you can top deck them and the Schemes are like little alchemists. That's the thing to do. I don't know exactly where this game is going to go long term, but I, I think I'm not building towards the double tactician deck. Um, so I guess next question now is the short term. The two main priorities I see early on are playing peasant a lot and then playing remake a lot to advance your peasant up the line and trash. I suspect both of those can't be done early, so you got to make a choice here. I don't see any opening. I'm trying to find an opening that makes effective use of star chart. I, I don't see one. Star chart's great if you can trigger a shuffle on turn three. I don't think that's realistic here, is it? Like, peasant star chart's not doing a whole lot for you. I suspect he's just opening remake scheme with hopes of scheming the remake and playing it both turn three and turn four. And I'm in increasingly coming around towards that. I don't see anything that pairs very well with peasant. I feel like peasant remake is too much of a gamble. They collide, I'm really sad. Yeah, I, I think this is just remake scheme. I found the remake, but not the scheme. No big deal. Looks like he's in a pretty similar boat. He has a marginally better draw because he's trashing two estates. I'm trashing two coppers. Normally that'd be a really big deal, but here hitting two isn't going to be super sad. There's a lot of good twos. So I don't, I don't mind if I am hitting lower price points for a little bit. It doesn't mean he gets to add a village earlier, which is good for him. I really hope not to draw an estate here. It's a 50-50 shot, and if I draw a copper, I can buy a star chart and guarantee a top deck remake. Um, there we go. If I scheme, scheme, top deck remake, I'm in a real good spot. So now my hope is to not draw the peasant. Thank you. And then, oh, actually, this doesn't quite work out, does it? My my thinking was I would just gain an acting troop here and then top deck it with star chart so that I could play both my remake and my peasant in the same turn. But I'm one draw short of that, aren't I? Down here is three coppers, peasant, estate. Yeah, that's a bummer. I think I'm just playing Remake again, even if it means I don't get to play the Peasant yet. I 
I don't know. I bottom decked the estate. That's like the worst thing. Uh, I've been really happy if I bottom decked the peasant since I don't plan on playing it. Um, oh well. Top deck acting troop. I'm probably a bit behind here, I think. Uh, hmm. I guess just discard the copper. That hurts a bit. I, mean, I would like to trash the copper. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty behind. He's the, the the turn three difference in draws made a bigger difference than I thought it did. Um, he's getting to play these peasants a lot sooner than I am. <laughs> so I think the most important thing that I can draw here is going to be soldier because I definitely don't want that to miss. And am I playing all of these? I could consider not playing remake. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm already super thin, so I'd rather save a villager and have extra payload be able to buy a five. What am I doing next turn? Um, that bottom card is... I've trashed two coppers? That can't be right. Did I miscount? I oh, okay, I've trashed four coppers. That's a copper. Um, so next turn I'll have three coppers, soldier, fugitive, something. Um, I can trash two coppers, play the soldier. Um, yeah, I think Falconer is best. Uh, do I want to scheme anything? I guess top decking the schemes is... No, top decking the schemes is worse than nothing. Uh, I can't top deck the things I really want to top deck, um, which is the soldier and the peasant, because I have to advance them. And I wanted to find the falconer. And if I top deck falconer, top deck a bunch of schemes, then when this happens... I'm less likely to have a copper in hand to discard. Like my ideal starting hand I think would be like three schemes or like two schemes, a fugitive, a, a falcon, and a copper. But I think if I top deck schemes I'm unlikely to find those other cards which are more important. I want the falcon in the starting hand because if he gains a two type card then I can activate it. And I want the copper in the starting hand so I can discard it. Uh, I'd expect them to just take ports here, probably. Oh, star chart. Okay, fair enough. I mean, star chart's good. <laughs> this is not a good draw. I really want to find my fugitive, so I think it's worth worth the risk of drawing one here. Fugitive, fugitive. Thank you. <laughs> that was a close call. Um, <laughs> And I think I'm just going to take, I don't know what I'm going to take. So I think I'm probably going to lose the scheme split 6-4, which means he'll probably put plus card on the schemes. I could as well and just suck it up and have four labs. Alternatively, I could go for ports and put plus card on those. <laughs> um, considering uh, what I would really ideally like is to have two falconers in my deck. That'd be really good. The concern is if I'm too low on actions and need to buy ports immediately. I think I can afford to take a second Falconer. Oh no, I've activated. That sucks. I guess that's one downside to it. So we're going to scheme those two, and that's it. And then we're going to top deck Disciple. My hope is he gets some two type card here, maybe a second Falconer. And then I take a port or acting troop or something off of this falconer. In which case I can disciple the other falconer and be very happy. Unfortunately, I can't get falconer off of his disciples, even though they are a multi-type, 
because you don't technically gain disciple. You, uh, what's the verb? Exchange for it. And Falcon only cares about if the other player gained a card of two types or more. So this comes down to whether he gains a Falconer, Tactician, Slayer, Peasant are the four two type cards. I still do worry that I don't have an exact vision of where my deck is going long term. Um, mostly just playing it by ear here. Okay, he's taking ports. Fair enough. Please activate my Falconer somehow. Uh, looks like it's not going to happen. Sad. So I think what that means is I have to disciple something else. I don't have any good targets. Yes. This is the downside uh, of taking the second Falconer instead of taking the... What do you call it? Ports. Now I can't activate my Falconer. I think I'm going to just disciple it anyway. I found most of the cards I want to find. I've already played my Fugitive. I was really hoping to draw Falconer here. Bottom decking the second one kind of sucks a lot. Um, but nothing I can do about that now. Just take two supplies. And now I should probably take ports, shouldn't I? And we will scheme a falconer. A scheme done. Top deck disciple. Oh, I... I won't actually get to do that yet, and it's going to happen momentarily. When I when I trigger my shuffle, I'll top deck the disciple. You know, I probably should have considered whether I really needed the teacher. I mean, it, it seems really good. Scheme and port both are really good targets for teacher, um, but. A secondary consideration is, you know, piles are kind of low, and maybe there's just not enough time for a teacher to pay off. I could have at least thought about keeping both disciples. But I do think that plus card token is going to help a good deal. Ha ha! You've activated my trap card. Now what do I want? Probably just a port for the moment. I have serious concern that if you, if you get overdraw here, which is going to happen really soon after teacher hits, then there's going to be some wild stuff to do with remake, where you can remake your schemes into more remakes, then into falconers, gain remakes off the falconers, and pile up very fast. Um, I think I actually might be in a better position than he is on account of I'm going to get my teacher down half a turn sooner. And then if I get that plus card token half a turn sooner, I think I'll be the first one to be able to do all the, all the fun stuff. Um, for sure, I want Disciple on top. Okay, I found my teacher. I think here I just take two more ports. And then that'll be the card I put plus card on most likely. And for the first time in this game, I feel like I've got a good sense of my end game plan at least, which is that I'm going to attempt to pile out on the following turn on remakes and falconers, if at all possible. Um, probably the best thing to gain here then is Slay. Um, feels like the most eminently useful card. And then maybe one more of them. I think Slays are really, I should turn this Disciple into default keep. Definitely not one second teacher. 
Um, I think slaves are really helpful when there's like gain and play type things because you can gain a card and put it straight back into your hand to re remake it. So I'm scheming disciple and falconer, I guess. Done selecting. Now, ideally he'll gain a two type, in which case I get to activate these falconers, which is wonderful. Uh, if he doesn't, I still can guarantee that I top deck a port, because I'll draw four cards and then star chart will let me guarantee ports on the top of my deck. So all of a sudden, I think I'm in a pretty good position now. I don't, I don't know what happened there. I was feeling behind for a little bit, and now I, I feel ahead. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I've got a guaranteed win or anything here, but I feel like I'm ahead. Maybe it was that turn where he failed to find his uh, fugitive. I think I'm discarding Falconer here. Gain more two type cards. I want to activate these. Now I think I should be careful about playing my schemes because scheme seems like a very good target for remaking. I can remake schemes into remakes. And my goal here is going to be to pile out. Actually, I mean, port's a good target. I'm piling out two of these three piles on the top here. Falconer remake port. I don't know which two. Maybe it's port and falconer, actually, that I'm piling. Um, let's just play this port normally first. I can disciple falconer. And uh, I'm only at the one disciple, right? Yeah, he's got the other one. Um, so I can go and activate this now and take another port. Yeah, I think port and falconer is actually going to be the easiest pile. So maybe I don't have to care about playing these schemes all that much. <laughs> Remake that, gain a port, put in hand, gain a falconer, activate, remake, continue. Putting in hand here would just be discarding my slave for no reason because it's already in hand. Yeah, okay, so he, he saw that the pilot was coming. I thought it was pretty clear. GG. Um, if nothing else, that, that did save me a bunch of clicking, so I'm appreciative of the resign. That was a lot of random nonsense to click through there at the end with Slay in hand.